And it would also be nice to do some, uh, to apply the concept of CRISP DM. Uh, it stands for Cross Industry Standard Process for doing data mining. So that process will comprise of six major uh, steps. So let me find on Google C R I S P dash D M. So it has six major steps. So it's going to be a it's a process diagram for doing data mining. It's kind of like a best practice. So a set of guidelines where uh, you could follow when you, you want to build your first data mining project. So the CRISP DM framework, uh, it will comprise of the uh, business understanding. So this is the first step. So business understanding would be your domain understanding. So in your project, is your domain understanding of the, of the children data uh, that you have collected. So that's your business. And so the thing is, your objective of your project, you have already told us that you want to correlate some parameters uh, relating to the cognitive function, executive function, and, and also you're, you're looking into the height, weight, and the TMI, and actually the confounding factor where, whether they will have any influence on the cognitive function. So you want to see whether the, uh, the obesity or overweight uh, will have any influence on their ability to learn in class, right? And you have already collected the data. So that's your business understanding. So the next thing is we have to do data understanding. So in data understanding, you have to get we have to get to know your data. So uh, we're, we're not in your domain, so we have to talk to you. So uh, it would be nice if um, if you have like a like a definition of each of each variable, mm -hmm. so that we can see. And if it's possible, if you could group them, you can say, okay, these five variables are cognitive function, these five variables are executive function. So that the thing is, if we are to analyze it as a group, we might be able to uh, compare and contrast. If we analyze comparing executive function versus cognitive function, right? so to see whether they have any difference or uh, compare and contrast them. So the next thing would be to to do a simple data exploration. So, I mean, if you can use SPSS or you can use basic uh, Excel, yes. uh, compare, make, calculate the mean standard deviation of each variable. And remember when, when we have the class that you mentioned, uh, the four class that you separated according to the BMI, yeah. right? You have the slim, the overweight, yes. right? Obese, normal, normal right? Yeah. So for each of them, we do stratify. We do stratification of the data, and for each of the four group, you calculate the mean value and standard deviation mm -hmm. of each group okay. for each variable. Uh, it's not, uh, right? It's very right. Okay. right. So you have the inhibition, you have the emotion control, you have the uh, the parameters related to executive function and the cognitive functions. Mm -hmm. So for each of the stratified class whether they are normal, whether they are slim, and whether they are uh, overweight, we'll be able to see whether they have any difference in the mm -hmm. executive function and cognitive function. So we will learn a lot from the data exploration. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. And then we can decide later how we can uh, create our model. Maybe we want to dump everything together and build one build model, or maybe we want to selectively take out some variable, or maybe we want to compare and contrast set of your variables. Right? Maybe one to compare executive function versus cognitive function, whether they have any influence on their ability to learn. Mm. Right. And the, the beauty of doing the analysis, maybe if you do it in R or in Python, we could color them. We could color the group of normal, the group of obese, the group of slim, mm -hmm. and then for each group and for each variable, we'll be able to see the, the relative distribution. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to see, okay, and in general, we can even use machine learning, like principal component analysis. So, so that we, we can see that in general, what is the distribution of the, the student from the slim group, the student from the overweight group, right? And the student from the normal group, whether they have any uh, distribution that are similar among each of these groups in terms of their ability to learn as measured by the cognitive function variables.
and especially by the exactly function variables. So there's a lot of things that we can do. Uh, in, in data preparation, right? Data preparation is sometimes there are missing values, or maybe there might be some inaccuracy. Or the thing is, maybe some features could be combined. Some feature could be transformed. Maybe we look at the distribution of the, uh, of the feature. Uh, if the feature distribution is not normally distributed, or it's not so less dispersed, we might be able to transform the data. Maybe we might do some log transformation so that we can make the distribution more uniform, <clears throat> right? Um, and then the next step would be to actually create the model. Mm -hmm. Right, so this depends on the data set that we have. So if we have qualitative data, we, we can do classification. Or the data that. Right, we, we could use something like decision tree. Oh. Right, or we could use other black box algorithm, like mm -hmm. software vector machine, neural network, uh, or logistic regression. But the thing I like about uh, decision tree and random forest is that it allows us to interpret the, the model. So we can understand. Yes. So we can get an understanding of the inside of the prediction model. How does it work? What is the cutoff? What variables are important? Mm -hmm. Whether the cognitive function is high and low, whether it makes uh, learning of the student uh, better or worse. Right? And then the evaluation. This is, as I mentioned, once we build the model, we interpret the model. We look at the feature. Which feature are important? And then that will help us to either deploy if we feel that the model is satisfactory, and then we will deploy the model. By deploying the model, we could also develop a web application. And then we could give the web application to the teachers at the school. And then the teacher from school can then measure or evaluate the, uh, the students based on the survey that you will give to them, mm -hmm. right? So if you give them the survey that you use to collect the data set that you have here, the exact same survey, it could be made into a web application, and the student can, could enter, and then they will get an immediate feedback. How do they, uh, what is their cognitive function or learning capability score? And, and more important, uh, if we get that uh, cognitive score, about the cognitive functions, right. we can also work or suggest, or suggest us on what parameter mm -hmm. uh, the teacher or the parents uh, should work on that particular child, right. mm -hmm. so that uh, the cognitive skills will be enhanced. Mm -hmm. So it's not only about what is the current, uh, what is the current situation. Mm -hmm. We can also just uh, help it out how the other students are just very low on the. Cognitive skills. On what parameters their cognitive their cognitive skills has been scored low? Mm -hmm. So we can just uh, add on those parameters so that their cognitive skills in the future will be enhanced. Mm -hmm. I guess I can tell you set up a fantastic example for making a website. Mm -hmm. Every teacher, every period or the time or the monitor should monitor their mm -hmm. kids right. and mm -hmm. should know where they actually should work. Right, right, right. 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 They do more specific uh, variable where they are they have to they are supposed to follow. Right. Okay. Right. Very good, very good point. And and the thing is um, the development of each child should be customized. Right, not, not all child have the same uh, cognitive capability, right? Uh, it, there might be other confounding factors that might influence the results. It might not mean that their cognitive function is not so good. Maybe they're, not, they're just, they, they haven't slept well. Maybe they're distracted. Mm -hmm. So there might be other issues that might influence the score, right? Or, uh, so, so, so the, these might be some of the limitations of the study, right? So, um, so the thing is how we can find other variables to accurately measure that outside uh, the test. Yes. Maybe observation based on the entire uh, semester. Mm -hmm. right? This is based on only one snapshot in time. Mm -hmm. So if, if the student happens to sleep very late at night, and then the following day he took the test, and he didn't perform well, 
that it doesn't mean that he's not performing well, but it might mean that maybe he's exhausted, and just because of that day, he, he performed not so well. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So so there are other other factors. Maybe yeah, right. maybe the teacher maybe something for the teacher to evaluate on a continual basis. Mm -hmm. So that we can see the progression over time. Or maybe we could do a like a like average over the entire semester. Mm -hmm. right? Something to something that that will measure the student cognitive function or executive function over the long time span. So the short time span is only a small fragment of what actually happened. That's maybe short follow up time. Yes. So follow up would be nice, mm -hmm. right? And or, or, or if there's a possibility of some um, I'm not sure about like long term measurements. Mm -hmm. But you know to get a baseline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when it, we're in a noisy place mm -hmm. and if we just you know measure it in one time frame, yeah, we might not capture all of the uh, sound in the room or all of the uh, signal, right? In, in, in a mixture of noise, there is there are signal, so the signal could could happen anytime, and and when we're capturing at time one to five, and maybe the signal will appear in time six to ten. So if we don't capture, you know, like in a longer time span, we might miss out on some important signal. And so same with the, the students learning to right? So I was suggesting that we should repeat. We should, we should, uh, we should put the new this, uh, new this observations, uh, making the meaning out of it. And, uh, that means is valuable, like right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.